welcome back, it's Christine again with the Artist Pod, and today we'll be drawing a goldfinch. As always, I'm using a Wacom Intuos Pro tablet, and I'm drawing straight into Photoshop, so let's get arting. Okay, so here's the goldfinch. Um, I have a little bit of black, so right up here we have some black, uh, yellow body, and orange beak. So we're going to get started with the black. Um, draw feathers much the way that we draw fur. It'll look It'll still look correct even though it's um, feathers. But it's one line, right? One line and then one in between. So we'll build it up this way. And I'm gonna, trying to follow the direction that the feathers would be going. I'm gonna re-angle it out this way because we have kind of this side running just kind of that edge. And then we'll bring that up. Don't have to worry about being clean on the edge. Um, you know, when you're dealing with feathers and fur, it's inevitable that it's not a perfect edge, so it's okay for your lines to go off. I'm just building it up. So this is still a sketching step. Um, this is where I sort of, um, I'm still sorting out, you know, the direction everything would be going, the direction the feathers are going, making sure there's no line conflicts. Um, that's what's happening here. So. I use this as a way to make it a little easier at the next step when I'm adding highlights and shadows because then I don't have to worry about the direction anything is going. I've already sorted it out here. It'll, it's helpful that um, the yellow is in place because that will make the um, drawing in the black here a little easier. I always have to choose a gray for black because I draw on black, so if it gets too dark it won't show up. So I use kind of a mid-tone gray, um, but that can be a bit problematic. Over the eye there's probably a little bit of a bulge, nothing major, probably a little bit. And then it's likely also swooping down a bit here. Just a little as it comes down the face. All right, well, now we'll do uh, the yellow, which will be much brighter than the black. And continue those lines on the way that they were going. I've created some fluff off the back of his head. Like any bird, right? They can they can have their their little fluffs coming up. Now, typically with birds, right as you come down, you're gonna have this swooping down by the eye, and then it's gonna change direction here as these feathers come up, and they'll meet them halfway. So, being aware of that as you're drawing birds, that's typically what happens where they kind of run into each other. So pulling this off the back and then redirecting them towards the back before we redirect them back down. Right, and then likewise here, we have the feathers that are coming down and around. And some of them will even out, right? some will come up. And as they get here, they turn in. Before they too start angling down to match the other hairs, uh, fur, feathers, whatever this is. <laughs> whatever birds have. <laughs> so the rest of this should be pretty straightforward. We shouldn't have anything else really interfere with what we're doing here. Right, so we have the um, 
neck where the feathers are going to be angled more out, right? Because you're kind of looking at that that side coming in, coming out as it turns. And then making sure it's kind of angled down. Probably going to give a little bit of a shadow where his head meets the neck, which is like right in here. But I don't know that it will actually be problematic if I don't. Some shadowing will be happening because you have the beak in place. Um, now you'll notice I'm lengthening out my strokes. You know, birds, like a lot of animals, the feathers on their faces tend to be the shortest. And then as they come down the body, they get longer. So as the feathers get longer, my stroke length increases. By the face, it's still shorter. By the head. I'm just pulling it straight down. So we take that off. That's how it's looking so far. And then we have um, the orange beak. Now this, unlike the feathers, we don't want any real big stray lines coming off. Feathers, it didn't matter. Beak, it does. So there's, you know, it's just a solid thing. So we want the lines contained as much as possible. Uh, some of it we can fix after we take off the sketch layer. And these don't matter how long the strokes are because there's no for our feathers, it's just the beak. But I still need to worry about line conflicts, so still making sure that the lines all make sense with uh, how the beak is shaped. So that's what we have so far. I'm going to do one more spot of gray. It's um, by the eyes. Around the eyes, you need to be careful. Because um, we pick up any weird variations. Eyes are the first thing that we look at when we're drawn to them. And knowing that, we just need to make sure everything looks nice and neat. This just doing a circle around the eye itself. Okay. Now, I'm going to have the light source coming from above and to the right. As always, it's above and in front of, right? It's coming in right in here. It's not behind or next to. Um, if it were behind, it would only be in silhouette, right? You'd miss all of the shadowing through here. And if it's next to, you'd have this extreme highlight that would then go into extreme shadows wherever there's bumpiness to stop it. So um, having it in front of your subject is one of the best ways to make sure it is uh, nice and illuminated. Because of its placement, though, all edges are in shadow. Um, the edge along this side is going to have less of a shadow than the edge along the back, but it's still going to have a shadow. And with black, or using gray as black, we're going to be um, putting less pin pressure overall as well. Um, so, I'm going to start with just this light, light pin pressure, also being mindful of, of how many strokes I'm putting, because that also in, uh, influences how bright something gets. Colors are also, it'll look more black when we fill in the yellow. The brightness or darkness of a color is dictated by the colors around it. That's why it's hard to do an all black animal with this technique. Um, but, there are ways around that. And it's easier, you know, you can do an animal that has multiple multiple colors and black in it like this. As I said, that yellow will really make it pop. But anytime you have an animal that has multicolors, the colors around it will help gray look black. Just following the lines we already have. Again, not full pin pressure. It's very light and being careful of how many strokes, where they are. 
Sometimes with this, I take off the sketch layer on big swaths like this um, of black. So we'll see if we keep the sketch layer on this time or not. It'll really depend on how it looks when I'm done if I think it's too bright. Sometimes removing that sketch layer can help. We'll add a little bit of highlighting to it after we fill it all in. But it can't be much because, again, the more strokes I add, the more it'll brighten it up in addition to the more pin pressure. So I won't be adding more pin pressure as I try to brighten up the gray. I'll be adding more strokes, give me a little bit more control over how many and where they're going. And it's okay to have some overlap between colors. Right? It's okay that this pushes down into the yellow. Um, it'll look more natural as it's trying to blend in. And you can see that's what it looks like without the sketch layer. We'll see. I might keep it. I don't know that right now I feel like it's too overwhelming, but I may change my mind. Now, if we were giving it some highlight, can I just add more lines? Again, not more pin pressure, just more lines. Brighten it up just a little bit because I can't brighten it up too much or it will start looking gray even with yellow around it. That's why I can't put full pin pressure. But just enough to show that something's different between one area and another. And then fade it out. All the way down to the beak. All of this would be highlight. Including back into here would still be highlight. But we are approaching an edge, so we'll back off as we start getting close. Right, right through here. Some of this is in highlight. I would say some of it is not. Edge is not. So I think the rest of this gray would be in highlight for the feathers. Not around the eye, but for the feathers for sure. Okay. Right, so right now it looks gray, but it won't. <laughs> That'll change very, very, very soon. Okay, actually I'm going to do the orange to the beak, and then we'll get into the yellow. So not only are all edges in shadow, right, so the, the top of this beak here is going to be in shadow, so this is light pin pressure, but um, down by the mouth it's going to be in shadow where you know, the top section of the mouth is rounding down into the bottom and then the bottom is rounding back out. So that's going to be in shadow. Take that back off. There. So the edge of the mouth will be dictated by the shadows and highlights, which is how it should be. making sure my edges are straight, right edge in shadow, so just finishing this out. And then underneath. Now, full pin pressure. You can see that difference there. Making sure to fade it into the areas that are in shadow so that it's not just this drawing line. And because of the nature of the beak, there's some opportunity to add like a white highlight or whatever on it, as opposed to the feathers where I wouldn't necessarily do that. I could, but 
It's typically not something I'll do. The white I reserve for things that are going to be shinier, like eyes and stuff, or beaks. I can absolutely do it. I want this fading back into those feathers because the feathers are coming up over that beak. Okay, and there's the top. Bottom obviously will have more highlight underneath. I mean, highlight, <laughs> more shadowing underneath, because it it's right. It's underneath. Um, so this is gonna quickly go into some highlight though, because it's rounding out. This one's going to have a little bit of a burst. Still fading that in. Just a little bit of a burst before it goes back into shadow. As it rounds, as it rounds under. Right, so down here, down into shadow. But still a little bit of highlight through here. Just gonna fade that down. And make sure it all makes sense. Yeah. Well, maybe a little bright underneath. That's why I like to back out, is sometimes I can see things far away that I can't see as easily. From close up, so I need to match the top highlight, which I haven't done a good job of. It's easy enough to do, I just need to make sure that it doesn't look like it's out of place. And see, with just shadows and highlights, you can clearly see where. Um, the mouth is on the beak. Okay. Now for the yellow. All right, so full pin pressure through here. Again, it's okay for them not to line up exactly, or you'd have some overlap from both. And you can see as this gray is surrounded by more color, it starts looking it starts looking more and more blackish, like it's a darker color. All right, so this would be in shadow because it's on the edge, and then we have the beak that will be blocking it. So still in shadow. Trying to make sure I don't go up and over the beak, which I have a little bit. I can take the um, lasso tool if I need to fix those edges, especially because the beak would be actively in front of it here. Right, so the beak technically lined up here with the light source coming from above and to the right. It's going to be casting that beak down and back a bit. And then, of course, the edges. Same thing for here. Some of this will be highlight, but some of it will be shadow because we're right on the edge. Don't have a lot of space to work with, so I'm going to do it in shadow just to get it sort of lined up. And then all back here would be shadow, away from the light source. Making sure that's deep enough. Sometimes what I'll also do is give myself a long enough runway um, to build in the highlight without creating a jarring transition. Sometimes I extend the shadow deeper than it needs to be because it's easier to 
add highlight than it is to take it away. So adding shadow is something that's easy to adjust. You just add more lines or more pen pressure and it turns into highlight. Also adding shadow just along the bottom. Um, instead of giving it a harsh transition, I'll sometimes fade out the edge of a composition. And I'll do that by just putting the light pen pressure as if it were a shadow so that it kind of fades without looking out of place, even though this would be an area that would be in highlight. Sometimes I don't do that. I'll run the highlight all the way to the edge. Um, it's a matter for just sort of getting a feel for how it's looking. If I think with this composition it works or doesn't work. Um, if ever I'm uncertain, I typically will start with the shadow just to be safe. And then if I decide I can push a little bit of highlight down into it, I might. Otherwise, I'm building up this shadow. And then the rest of this should be highlight with maybe a little bit of an exception through here. Uh, a little resource with my mark there. Right on the back side of the eye, just giving it a little bit of um, shadowing. Not going to be a lot, just because of the nature of the way the eyes are shaped. Maybe a little bit right through here, but probably not a lot. And likewise, we have, you know, the, the head kicking in. So maybe a little bit of shadowing into here. But I may undo that as I draw. <laughs> we'll see. See how it goes. All right, so some of this in highlight. And again, right, this is just full pin pressure and we'll fade it into that back side. And then just sort of fading in, right, this area where uh, we had that little bit of a shadow, not a lot, just giving it a little, it'll create some uh, sense of, of depth. You can kind of see it, even though it's not a lot. It's just enough. Just being careful around the eye. I mean, there's that little bit of skin there that's buffering it, but Still being a bit careful. And then right back into full pin pressure. And again on the edges you can kind of see as I come to the edge I fade it out into that little runway I created for myself as he, you know, his body turns away from us. I'm going to do a little bit here to fade this in a bit better. I feel like it's a little too harsh. It's nothing big. Just brightening up the areas just past it so it doesn't look like highlight and shadow are two separate things. But rather they're just a continuation, a more natural continuation. You didn't have to do much. It was already um, kind of, I'd done it better up here than I did down here, but um, means I didn't have to fix half of it. When I do that, I don't put full pin pressure. It's just this light sort of pin pressure. Because when you're drawing in an area that's already shadowed, right, as I mentioned before, right, if I'm drawing in here, it doesn't take more pin pressure. More lines will also brighten something up. That's what makes drawing black so hard. Well, black with gray without the gray looking like it's gray. Same as I come down in here, right? I wanna make sure that this is nice and tapered in and not any sort of um, jarring transition. 
So to fix that, right, it's just going to be that light pin pressure bridging the gap from shadow into highlight. Or I should say from highlight into shadow. I'm just brightening up the shadow around the highlight until it looks like it's fading naturally. Not being very even on where I'm pulling down the highlight into the shadow on the bottom. Again, because all of this technically would be in highlight, I don't need to necessarily keep that consistent. It's just a way to sort of fade it out without it making, without making it seem like it's this weird transition. Um, I've just noticed sometimes, you know, when you end a composition too harshly, especially more with birds than with anything else, is when I'll see it it can look out of place, and so it's just a way to make sure that edge doesn't seem out of place. We're doing pretty good. Now we just have uh, the eye and that sort of skin around the eye. All right, so now for um, the black around the eye. Just making sure nice and neat, no stray lines. As I mentioned before, right, eyes are important, so making sure that this um, doesn't detract in any way. Just doing that light pin pressure because it's that same gray, so we don't want that to overtake it, just like we didn't with the uh, feathers on his forehead. I'm going to do a little bit of highlighting above and to the right on this side. Again, it's not much. I'm just adding more lines. And then I'll do a little bit underneath as well. And this is more against the eye here. So it's not much, but it does make a difference. Now their eye colors, uh, eye colors listed as kind of a like a dark brownish. So I've chosen this color. It's kind of in the same range as the gray. Um, after we do the eye, I'm gonna go back in and add a little bit more to the yellow, um, blending this in a little bit more. Um, and then potentially adding some white against the beak. So we'll see how that goes, but first we have the, the eye to do. So um, I'm going to check that I'm on the right layer because that sucks when you're not. <laughs> and I'm just going to draw a circle. It doesn't have to mean eight because we're going to be taking the um, lasso tool and fixing it a bit. And I want to make sure sometimes getting too close means I can't tell if it's looking at me. I want to make sure that it, it's roughly looking at us. Not putting a lot of pin pressure as I do this because I need room to add highlights and shadows. And you can see my lines aren't very straight and that's fine. Um, that's one of the things I like about this style is that's okay. Especially because we're not really adding um, shadows and highlights yet. I'm just sort of going around the eye, getting it set up. Now usually I don't go all the way around the eye. I typically will, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it with birds more than anything else. Um, because with mammals and things, different eye shapes and all of that, you're going to have more or less of the eye blocking um, and casting, therefore, a shadow. But sometimes bird's eyes, um, you know, you don't want to leave a ton of dark space, and so I'll just fill all the way around. It's easy enough to do. Which typically, I don't 
I'll allow the black to act as a shadow up in this area where the eyelid would be casting a shadow. But with birds, I'll do that with um, pin pressure and how many lines I'm putting. So I'm still going to do it, but it won't be the pure black. Okay. Now, I'll take the elliptical marquee tool. and pop it over what I've drawn. This will clean up the edge. All right, so we're just gonna erase that. Um, sometimes when I do that, I'll pop it, pop it back on and I'll select inverse. What this allows me to do is make sure this is a clean edge so I can draw right into it because inevitably doing this will leave some gaps. So this helps me not leave gaps right against the pupil since the pupil is so important. All right. Yeah. Now, light source coming from above and to the right. So that means there's going to be a burst of light against the pupil on the opposite side of the light source because the pupil is a recess. Right? As I've talked about many times, the pupil is a recess. So. Um, on the side of the light source, it's going into that recess, therefore it's in shadow, and I, on the opposite side, the light source is kicking back in because it's coming out of it. That's how you can do it for a cup as well. And then we're gonna add full pin pressure on the side of the light source, all the way up to the edge. Again, this is in shadow, but not a big one. So I'll have that coming all the way up, all the way underneath, all the way to the edge. Now the edge is in shadow, so, you know, not all the way over, but pretty close. Just making that circle and making sure we're pulling it all the way underneath and filling it in. This gives us a nice long run runway on the back side to create a shadow over here and then up here will be a darker shadow. All right, and then as we come over here, we start fading out. And then also making sure that even though that this side is going to be in a bit more of a shadow, that the light burst against the pupil sort of fades into it. Want that to sort of fade in just as much as we want the rest of it to. So now I'm backing off my pin pressure. And then bring it very lightly up as well. Okay, now we want to sort of blend it all together. All right, we want this to look a little bit more natural as it comes up in here. And we want this side to be brighter than the top. that does a good job of fading up into it. And if we need to, we can brighten up this as well. Now, one of the most important things to add to an eye is the light flare, which is always in white. I'm going to take the elliptical marquee tool again, highlight that, making sure that I'm not up in here, right? I don't want it where the shadow would be because the shadow is there because the eyelid's blocking it. I want it down where the highlight is, pushing into the pupil. above and to the right because it's on the side of the light source. This is where the light flare is catching that light source. And we're going to fill it with the foreground color. There we go. Okay, since we already have the white selected, I'm going to see about adding just a little bit on the beak. Doesn't have to be much. So I'm not putting full pin pressure for this. Just putting a few lines, doesn't have to be much because the white should really pop. Just wanted enough to indicate the light is hitting here, right? So there's going to be like a spot where the light's hitting and then fading it out as we go away from it. It's 
since we're not using a ton of pin pressure, some of this is with how many lines we're putting. All right, and that gives us just a little burst on his beak. And now for the yellow. Not much, but typically what you want to do if you're blending in colors a bit, you want to take the lighter of the two colors, because that's what's going to show up, and push it into the other one. I'm not putting full print pressure when I do this. Just a little bit. Just enough to make it look a little bit more natural. Um, so that it looks more like they're blending together and it's not like a harsh transition. It does depend on the animal. Some animals it'll look a little bit more like a harsh transition. Um, but in some cases it won't look right. And I don't know in this one that it does, so just adding, again, light pin pressure, just sort of filling in a little bit. So he just tempers it just that little bit. I think that works. All right, so that is how you draw a goldfinch. I hope that was helpful. In the floating nether next to me, I have other videos of art tutorials I have done, and I will see you all soon. Thank you so much. Take care.